How's it going everyone? This is Scott Takai and I recently just wrapped a project called Como La Flor, which was a Spanish music video that I was the cinematographer and the editor for. And the video that I wanted to make today was actually going over the intro drone shot because in that shot, we shot it at a location that was currently under construction still. So there was traffic cones and trash bins in different parts of the shot and the client didn't like it. So what I did is I took it into After Effects and removed all of the those parts and made it look like it was never there in the first place. So in this video today, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. I just want to let you guys know ahead of time, I'm sorry for the bad audio in this video. Um, I don't actually have my lavalier mics on me. Um, I'm just using the on-camera shotgun mic because that's what I have right now. So here we have the shot that I exported out of Premiere. And I'm going to drag this down and put it into a new comp, this, which is this icon right here. And it's going to create a new composition. And right here, I have the comp and I like to stay organized. So I'm going to drag that into to the comp folder. As you can see in this shot, I'm gonna fast forward to the end a little bit. What we have in this shot is we have a cone here, cone here, cone here, and a big trash can right here. Doesn't look very appealing. We're gonna go up to the window and we're gonna go to tracker and we're going to track camera. What I normally do is I go up to this advanced tab, click on detailed analysis. It takes a little bit longer, but it gives you much more accurate uh, points. Okay, so now that we're done tracking the footage, uh, what you're going to see here is all these little crosshairs. And I promise it's not as intimidating as it looks. What these little crosshairs means is just tracking data for all the different objects that these um, crosshairs are actually linking onto. So we're going to zoom in all the way to the end right here. And you're going to see all of these little crosshairs linked to different things. And there's a couple of them that are linked to this traffic cone. So what we're going to do next is you kind of have to thoroughly go through the footage and just track back a little bit and be very aware of what crosshairs are disappearing and which ones are permanently staying there. Because not all the objects are going to stay tracked for forever just because of how the way the shot moves or the, any objects that are in the way. And then there's going to be some objects that are tracked very easily. So as of right now, you can kind of see this purple crosshair right here. Uh, it hasn't left yet since the very beginning, but if you go over here, there's actually uh, the second one right here, which I think disappears. Another way you can um, make it a little bit easier to see is you can go to the track point size and make it a little bit bigger. So we're gonna track backwards and now see that the little crosshair just disappeared when we go to about right here. So this track point, that track point is not good. We don't wanna use that one. So let's, um, Let's go back to over here and then I'm going to lower this just so I can see what we're working with. I'm going to move a little bit backwards again and we're just going to be aware of different track points that stay and the different track points that disappear. And again, those purple ones that were originally on the cone uh, aren't good because they disappear at some point. So far, I'm looking at this red one. This red one stays there for a pretty long time. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to see from this point. This red track right here stays with us the entire duration of the clip. So that will be a good tracking point to start with. So what we're going to do now that we see that this is the track point that we should be working with, we are going to click on it. We're going to right click on it and create a null and camera. And what that's going to do is it's going to separate it. And now if we highlight the track null one, you see we have these little uh, arrows which represents the x y and z axis of the object and when we zoom in it just stays there the entire time okay so the next step that we're going to do is we are going to find a good frame to take a screenshot of since the object goes from very far to very close we want to try to find a frame in the shot that covers this general area and then also, I know that's a little bit confusing, but it'll make more sense uh, once we actually go through it a little bit more. But so far I find that the best frame is the very last frame of the shot. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna close this out real quick. And then I'm going to go up to composition, save frame as, and file. What that's gonna do is it's gonna save a Photoshop uh, screenshot. I'm just gonna name this cone. We're gonna save it to a folder and then we are going to render it out. Boom. 
So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go to the screenshot that we just took and we are gonna double click on it and that's gonna open it up in Photoshop. Okay, so here we are now in Photoshop. We're gonna do Command J to do to make a duplicate of our background layer, which is the layer we just took a picture of just in case uh, we need to go back for whatever reason. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the clone stamp tool. I'm gonna sample this little dirt patch over here to get rid of the cone. I wanna match it with this dirt. So I'm gonna sample from right here. We're gonna draw that in and get rid of that cone. sample some of the soil all right so now that the cone is gone we are going to command save and then we're going to close out photoshop we're going to go back here and then we're going to open up our project and then we are going to pull in the picture that we just worked with the cone, merge layers, push OK. And then what we're gonna do next is we're going to take this pic take this picture, drag it down, and then we're gonna place it over our frame. So now it's gone, but obviously there's a lot more that we have to do because this is just a still frame. Um, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna right click on the PSD file and my screen's in the way, so I can't freaking see where I'm working. We're gonna do pre-compose. I'm gonna leave all the attributes in the intro drone shot too. It doesn't really matter what you call it. I'm just gonna click OK, and that's gonna make a new composition with specifically that picture. So the next thing you wanna do, our cone that we're trying to get rid of was right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the pen tool and we're gonna create a mask around, whoops. Make sure that make sure that the PSD is selected. Otherwise, you're just gonna make a shape layer. We are going to make a box around here. Bam, that's where our cone originally was. And then what you do next is we're gonna go up to this uh, anchor tool, uh, click down here to deselect it, and click on the anchor tool, and reselect it. And then it's very important that you do all these little steps. It's really annoying, but that's just how After Effects works. We're gonna put that anchor tool in the very middle right here in between this box and in the middle of our little cutout. And then I'm gonna click on this and click on S and it's gonna bring up scale and we're gonna bring it up. We're gonna blow it up like this. Whoops. Click off. Put, let's see, click on the arrow so that we can move this freely without changing the way the image looks like I was just doing. There we go. And then we're gonna click on F and we're gonna do a mask feather. It doesn't have to be too crazy, just enough to get rid of the sharp edges. So here we are, we have this mask that we just made, feathered it off in our uh, pre-comp. Okay, so now that we're done here, we're gonna go back to our original shot. And now we have this, this big blob on the screen. And that's from, that's the effect of all the work that we just did in here from the blowing up and whatever. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna scale this guy down. We're gonna command plus on the Mac to zoom in. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go to this little squiggly line right here. We're gonna click and drag it to track null one. And then what this does is it makes it so that this picture links to the data that's connected to this track null. And the track null is just the tracking data that we just created from the 3D tracking whatever. And we're gonna click on this little square right here. And what that does is it turns it into a 3D layer. And if you don't see it, then you have to click on this switch right here, toggle switches and modes, and it switches between between these two different things. And then next thing we're gonna wanna do is we are going to line it up with the original shot. And the easiest way to do that is put, click on T, lower the opacity, and now you can see in between the two shots and we're just gonna line it up here. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to look almost perfect. Now, if we move backwards, ta-da! you can actually see that the shot is staying exactly where it needs to be and it's matching with that tracking information that we just created. So only one problem left 
is obviously there's a tree right here. If I close this out, you're gonna see that the tree is there. So the last step that we are going to do is we are going to do the intro drone shot clip and I'm gonna do Command D to duplicate it. And now I'm gonna move this shot directly above the picture. This, is, this part's important, it has to be above the picture. So it gets rid of all of our hard work, but what we're gonna do next is we are going to double click on it and it's gonna bring it into this little layer tab. And then we're gonna click on this tool called Roto Brush. So if we go back and you look at the original shot, you can see that the tree is really the only thing that is wrong with this actual shot. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go into the layer. What we're gonna do with that Roto Brush is we are going to draw over this tree. What the roto brush does is it's a, basically a way of creating a mask. So we're creating another mask. I'm not gonna do it perfect. I'm just gonna do it well enough to for you guys to get the idea. But basically whenever you click, it just creates a mask around random things in the object. And to perfect it a little bit more, you're gonna push and hold alt for it to turn red and you can slice it you can slice the mask a little bit and it'll get rid of different parts. The more contrasty the image is, the easier it is for um, the roto to actually read everything. Next thing you would do, um, this little bar right here, and drag it all the way over there. I don't remember what it does, but as far as I know, it makes it so the program can read like the future frames and kind of anticipate where the mask should be. Um, I could be wrong on that, but that's just what I always do. And then next, we're gonna do the next frame. I'm gonna push and hold command, push on the right arrow. And then as you can see, like the program is already guessing where the roto should already be. And again, I'm not gonna go through the entire thing just to make sure that the video doesn't get too long. The next thing you're gonna wanna do, like let's pretend we're done. The last thing you would wanna do is you're gonna go up to this roto brush and refine edge effect. I'm gonna increase the feathering usually helps to reduce the chatter too. I'm gonna to go back to our composition. I'm gonna click this back on. So what we did is with this shot right here, I'm gonna close everything out just so you guys can see what we actually did. But what we did is we created a little mask out of this clip. Since it's on top of the original clip, you're basically hiding that little um, pic screenshot that we just made underneath the tree. The cone is gone and the tree, now it looks pretty seamless. Obviously it doesn't look perfect because I didn't actually take the time to perfect it, but obviously when you do the actual effect, you're gonna wanna do that. You can kinda see a little hard edge around here, which is why you're gonna want to feather the hell out of it. And once I actually do the rotoing to every single frame in the shot, it should look like this. It doesn't actually look perfect in this example clip that I'm showing you because in the actual video itself, there's text over it. So I didn't really bother uh, perfecting it since the text pretty much hides the imperfections. So that is the video for today. I hope you guys found this useful. And if you're interested in seeing the full video, click on the link in the description. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Peace.